roster. Their opponents on the other side keep the same roster. Keep this roster filled with some veterans of Heroes of the Storm, but not really top tier players, right? A lot of rookies that finally get their chance to play in the pro scene. And I feel like OJ in his last series, I, I feel like he really hit the mark. And he's somebody that we've been criticizing a lot for his Muradin play, his probability uh, to lock in Muradin no matter what. He's shown a larger hero pool in part two, and he is very much improved. I think his tank play quite a bit, so he's someone that I'm really focused on in this series. We know that Liu is all about his large support hero pool. Yes, he tries different things, at least. It does not always come with a success, but there are, uh, we, could, we can see the reasoning behind it, and it actually makes sense. But not perfect, perfected as a support yet. On the other side, luck when they have gleaming, they pop off. When they don't have gleaming, they don't. That's very much a true statement. On has been played three times by KCB in conjunction with Leeming for attempted nano boost. They tried the nano mouth ale as well to less success, but they like to run the Ana, something that will be potentially valuable on maps like Sky Temple. Moving forward, maps like Cursed Hollow, where Leeming's reset potential can actually be game deciding. Yep, and good luck. They focus so much on Blaze Phoenix rotation, picking up both all the time, which actually is for phase two. Uh, two of the most picked heroes for the entire phase, 15 and 13, Blaze Phoenix. So they combo that all the time, but if that's stolen away, they have some problems. And I think Belize, because of their intelligent, dra intelligent drafting with some homework done, I think they will steal at least one of them away or ban. Sky Temple actually banned away by Belize. They won't even have the attempt to run that Ana Leeming on that map. Dragonshire will be the counterband, so both Praxis and Volskaya open for the series. I told you guys, anything could happen in this best of five. Still believe it. Tomb's the first map, though. First pick will go to red side here. Gluck has the opportunity to lead this draft down their path. And with KCB's often odd hero pool picks for support, I don't know if Deckard will be the way they approach this as the other top tier teams have been going down that route with normal bands in first rotation, I don't think Luck will necessarily follow suit. Stecker's risen to first position across this region right now. Luck doesn't always follow those trends, those no, rules. No, not at all. As, as they have their own, and whichever they think is needed for the map, they just pick it on top. They don't really follow the top tier hero list. Which, I'm not saying they sh you should always, but it should always have some reasoning and some pair-up after. Sometimes they lack, lack on those parts to actually follow after, but white main band. Maybe they're looking for the Deckard first pick. Could be a Phoenix first pick as well. Cluck likes to run their Phoenix a lot, but they do jump back to those more meta trends. Oh yes, and they would have, they would love to take Phoenix uh, at least. Phoenix or Blaze, either one. Okay, Hanzo, very odd pick to be prioritized this highly on this map. Gonna be with the Garrosh, that very powerful early game rotation when Diablo is removed, you have control of the tank line. When there's no Diablo, there's no Maev, and you get the Garrosh, you feel like the early game belongs to you. There's almost nothing you can't do. A new Brock. Very risky pick into a Garrosh. And they do it with the Junkrat, so they have that at least a little bit of peel with the Concussive Mine. Yeah, we saw what Junkrat could do in the first first series of today. And also Garrosh. Really highly picked without the Diablo because they're kind of scared that it's going to be banned out. Picking up Garrosh and the Brock for both. And Feliz, knowing that Phoenix 100% will come out from Gluck, Bands out, perfect one. If you follow the line of reasoning based on heroes that have cho been chosen already in the Phoenix ban here, even though it will lack somewhat of a finishing, uh, you know, mage or burst damage, I think that we may see Rainer picked up here now for Feliz, knowing that there's no blind on the other side. And this Irel ban may actually cost them if Feliz picks up Blaze, yeah. because they removed one already, which gives chance to, for 
Blaze to pick up either one. And if they do go with Blaze, then Raynor cannot be picked up. It will be really hard to peel for Raynor now. So let's see. I think Raynor Blaze is a great rotation here and save the support for more of a counter pick at the end. They want the burst finishing damage though, so they'll take Li Ming instead. It's not the greatest map for Li Ming, but can be very great to slow down, turn ins, delay, and eventually once you get Hanzo plus Li Ming, poke, someone gets low, mm -hmm. go in for that Calamity combo, start your critical mass. Alex Strassa going to be used here by Feliz. It'll be the second time we see her on this map, this split. And for Glock, final two picks. They will get the Blaze Rainer they were looking for, which was something I think that Feliz considered going for the deny for. It was going to be very likely was what I thought. Because Alex Raza was not going to be taken unless Feliz, their final pick, was going to be something very big of a surprise. Which has to be because they've hidden it all along. It's going to be a weird solo lane matchup, probably. Could be something like a Thrall or the Mouth Ale. The Orc, less common for this matchup, but very good against Anubrak as well. Anubrak, if he gets caught after Garrosh comes in, then he gets Entombed, then he's getting that percentage-based damage eating at him. The Orc is very, very powerful against tanks that do get caught in the web, so to speak. So... The drafts here, the more standard draft definitely goes to Gluck mm -hmm. for the map. They got everything they wanted, I think. But given how Gluck plays, their playstyle, Roxer's aggressive nature on the Anubrog, I think Feliz has gotten what they wanted in terms of countering that. So they basically gave Gluck what they wanted and prepared to counter it. It's all going to be about execution here, and the tank line is going to be so key. Unless Feliz has something else in mind, like we saw from Supernova, where they actually use the Dragon Queen to push lanes before you actually summon those Wet Weavers. I believe it was the first time Alex Strauss on Spider in Korea, just yesterday, and yes. the second time today. That's right. So, very powerful for the Wet Weaver push. Not the greatest at contesting turn ins because you can just avoid the Dragon Queen very easily. Was a success yesterday. Perhaps they're trying to adapt this. Interesting stat. 0-6 uh, for Feliz versus Gluck at the 2-7 scoreline. So, probably Gluck's best map. It was Feliz's pick against them. Power Hungry is going to be Lee Ming's talent. Dudu actually rocking that default horse for it. Oh. Oh, oh Feliz, they were able to actually have some... Oh, there's a toss. Okay, Thor. Not Thor. Thoro. I just heard something. I think Asgard's ID shows up incorrectly, but... Okay. Yeah. He's using the ID MSG, perhaps a mistake on the login, but that is Asgard, in fact. Not what I get after I eat a lot of Buddha chicken. <laughs> it's the old one where... I believe MSG was the other one. That's, he was the that's sub. The old one. Yes. Yeah, he was the sub, so that's it was probably just he had the wrong login information for this client. So not really that significant at the end of the day. Oh, that's who we are going to be calling Asgard for. Yes. Just to let you guys know. Thanks for the pickup, Wolf. Well, see what Gluck does with this early game control they have with the Junkrat pick, because Garrosh. Remember I mentioned earlier, you feel like you're god uh, with this, and you feel like you are untouchable. You can walk around the map. You've got your armor, you have your toss. But so far, with the wave clear control that Gluck has actually put into this map, um, and Mycin just getting so much free damage done, like it's actually, in fact, Junkrat who controls this early game. Well, these is just, you know, a little bit on the back foot. Cap timing is better for them, though. If they get a lot of damage done to this wall, could propel them forward, forward towards that level 4 talent advantage. Rocks are looking for a flank here, but no follow-up. Has to leave. Look at, I think they can control a lot of the wave, but she tosses in with the mine to get the aura done. 
Rocks are going for double stuns here. OJ is the target, but Dragon Queen is committed. They just want to get this wall with this cap. There's the first kill here for Dudu. Second Gets a second one. reset. And that's just, those kills make this push so much stronger and also just gave him more orbs to hit the wall. Meanwhile, no problems in bot lane for uh, Hanaten. He's just continuing to push that, winning the matchup against Asgard. Top lane now is the target for Leeming, where she's getting more orb damage done. Look at this, even Sonic Arrow committed to here for Aimer. Overlord's trying to body block this from doing damage. Look at this push. Insane value from just one Dragon Queen. Maybe this is going to become a really meta thing. It seems so powerful in its execution in these last two matches. Yeah, right before the first turn, set of turn, turn in, so you can actually get so much value. MSG's caught, body blocked here a little bit by Aimer. And I have that root from the scroll of ceiling to help escape. OJ's got so much armor, they need to be careful not to overcommit. He's got the sustain from Liu and the glow from the mid lane as well, so he will be okay after tapping into wall. They don't, Bro team's not having enough, so they don't actually have to, it's not a must. They would like to, but they don't really have to 100% to turn in. Yeah. Remember, it's really important. Uh, and we almost never talk about this, but and because everyone knows this is a true thing, but uh, Liu actually has to have a large health pool in order to get the maximum value out of his heals. So, got to be careful about managing that. You know, if he actually takes a lot of poke damage from Junkrat or Raynor, then he's going to be less effective as a healer with his Q. That's why, you know, W is the build, but still. Keep in mind. Now they have enough. So, you have to get a control. And Junkrat on top has been actually just wave clearing, nothing else. And that's really important because Li Ming was looking to put some real hurt on that top wall. They actually keep both cannon towers alive in mid. They're both hanging by a thread. If Felius is able to get those, they're going to get a huge chunk of experience. So that's why Gluck is actually still re relatively even at the moment. At least the moment they hit 7, maybe they want to push a little bit more, but their wave clear is not the same. So Gluck buying some time after pushing their own. Oh, Blaze, Leoric bottom lane. Nothing crazy is going to happen. Well, won't speak too soon as OJ is looking for something. Does get the combo off to grab another Groundbreaker stack, but... Yeah, day you're correct. Nothing too crazy. They wanted something crazy to happen, but you can always get what you want. Asgard trying to bait with that turn in. Roxer really has to be so careful with his usage of his burrow charge. He is always holding it right now, like, so he can escape in this case. If he had been stunned one more time, he would have had to use it. Holds it again. So, Anubrak, despite going for that E build, is really just limited by the Garrosh in this early game. Post 10, it gets a lot easier. But right now, you're so worried about being killed if you're the one who makes the engage. Yeah, without Junkrat, it's basically save Rainer, make sure he doesn't get in range where OJ is, or slows from Hanson at all. And Hanzo Junkrat 1v1, wave clearing top and mid, it's not really going to connect too much. Actually, Junkrat getting some in right now, up to 35. Yeah, but I mean, they're doing a ton of damage as well. Rainer just basically put everyone super low, they have to tarp t tap the well, not tarp. They put the tarp over the well when it rains, but um, let's drain that holy heal water that they keep in there. I don't know what's in there. Web Weavers will go to Gluck. So they do get this nice turn in here off of that damage that was done by Raynor in that last fight where he was poking, chunking everyone down. And this could snowball very quickly. And it, Feliz was just on the edge with all the damage they did the wall. They were just on the edge of really pushing this game massively into their favor, getting 10 first, getting that first turn in. But this one moment for Gluck where they get this turn in changes everything. It's because Hans was losing massively. He was down half health from the top lane. Against Junkrat, losing slower in the rotation. There's a season chain onto Geralt. OJ is the first one to blow up. Blood Weavers are continuing to push. It's going to be a greater one of a push now to Gluck. Yeah, Dragon Queen here not going to be that great. Sure, they're going to help clear this up, but once 10 is online here for Gluck, they have an opportunity well, to Hanzo almost further. died. Yeah. So Meissen's basically destroying that Hanzo. Yeah, he and really Without is. that Hanzo, it's really hard to... You only have Leeming from Police to actually do some range damage to harass and cancel the turn in. Thing is, he has to go home. Otherwise, he could die to Riptire. And look at this. They're going to commit to this 
Cocoon. I don't know if they'll be able to get the follow-up kill. They get the stun and the root, but Overlord wants it. Rip tires over the wall and just barely he gets away. And look how much damage fort. it does to everyone on the back line. And that's what that's what's scary because a lot of them were near 80, 90 percent HP just from one rip tire. So the back line naming Hanzo. When that rip tire comes through, will they be able to? He's saved because they don't have the bunker for themselves. Speaking of save, Myzen may have gone a little bit overextended here. We'll get caught by the wave of force there. Nice attempt to escape. So a nice little, I guess, consolation prize here for Feliz. Not going to be what they wanted, but going to be at least uh, one step back in the right direction. This will allow them to get the web we've returned in. Sometimes what you want to do when you have a lot of gems and still a few seconds for Junkrat to come back. And you know Gluck's using their time to do camp and not wave clear in this case. Sometimes you do want to push the wave a little bit further and then turn in if you know for a fact you can. Because when Junkrat's gone, I think they had a really good chance of doing it. Yeah. And Gluck decided to, at the same time as have him split push, take the bottom camp. So they didn't utilize the advantage they had correctly. And Feliz could turn this game right back around. It's a big arrow, a big entomb. Gluck has to respect that. And again, Roxer can look for the hard engage, but it's going to have to be with a Lornado, with a Cocoon. He's tossed, taunted. We'll have Burrow Charge now, though. Just Cocoons to make sure he can get out. The perfectly placed entomb here is going to trap him, but now they're going to use the Hyperion. They're going to look to turn this back around. They lose four. And so many heroics used here by Gluck to actually try to keep that alive. They do fail. About 3-3. Three to three. Wave of Force is back because it's on a less of a cooldown, but still they managed to get the fort, but still very uneven experience on the top of VC. I think that's the reason why Leori actually entombed. They wanted to possibly look for more kills, but they were busy destroying the key of fort. The top and bottom were getting cleared pretty easily. Well, now Gluck has 13. Double turn in. Something they cannot prevent, though. Hanton's holding 70. 47. So... Well, I think he's just holding 47. If he was holding 1,747, <laughs> man, we'd have an issue. As long as Gluck is able to stop him, then it's all good. The rest of the member is not really holding in too much. If he dies, though... That's another news. Yeah. Well, you know, they actually were successful in preventing this. I don't know where that arrow just went. Okay, looking for Myson. They're actually going to get this nicely done. Very nicely done by Twice. Amber. That's actually so difficult to do against a good Junkrat, but I feel Myson has perhaps been a little bit overextended, shall we say. Hanan's just like, please let me turn these in. Just to buy time? Yeah, this is a little bit... It's a little bit much. They're going to get it. So Feliz fighting their way back into this game through these two Junkrat picks. Honestly, more, more than anything else. To clear this wave will get them a little bit more caught up in experience. We'll give the Web Weaver time to head towards that mid push. Fort's already down, so it's going to go directly to Keep Wall eventually. So they're going to want to put their focus elsewhere. Escorting the Web Weaver's top and bottom will be a larger priority. The mid one will naturally push while also clearing those lanes. They want to focus on one and then rotate down quickly enough so everyone's up here. And they're actually, it seems like it seems like the web viewers are against them, but they're actually leading so far. Well, this is going to force a big rotation down. MSG's caught. Everyone else is late. He has bunker, but it, okay, not in fact too late, but still going to go down here. Wanted to try to sneak out a different direction than Feliz would have expected, but... Does get caught, doesn't really have much of an escape, and when everyone was that far away, mm -hmm. Bunker can only do so much. Arrow... Deck, trying to catch Deckard, I think he's in two. Yeah, and he's gonna get blown up. That's another reset here for Dudu, and suddenly Gluck is, after their initial lead, totally falling apart. Looks like they're committing to this heroic just to prevent mounts, but... Mm -hmm. Don't end up getting the kills, they're holding currently about 45-ish gems, I think, so they're not going to be able to get the triple turn in or anything like that, but really nice spot for them. Keep wall going down bottom, and they've taken a massive experience lead. They have enough for another turn in because the Oryx stayed alive all this time. I'm not going for... Rosser's 
Scanning for boss, I don't think that was an option here before 16. You know, with all those waves, they actually have enough. Rockstar needs to be so careful, like, it is just not worth it. If he throws in 35... It is just not worth it with the rest of, without the rest of his teammates. Okay, forcing Pop. out a bunker here. Yeah, bunker will be popped in just a second, but Liu... And Liming's cocoon, but Junkrat is not here, so a lot of burnt out heroics here. Okay, there's the Dragon Queen. He does not have his heroic. Another missed arrow here, unfortunately, for Aimer. He's had a few good ones, a few bad ones in this one. OJ, so much armor. The pushback here from Liu and the shield buying some time, but there's just no damage here. Dudu's too low, so he can't get in. And five gems to the 60 they need exactly enough. Well, they will not get it. Gluck will get the next turn in here. They only get one kill, so they're not going to be able to boss off of this. But what a back and forth first game here. Of our five, potentially five game series, I really feel like this is going to game five. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Ooh, that was so close. Oh my god! He they, got out! They almost got the camp and killed Dudu. Just in time, what a play. Luckily, they managed to do so with a great emerald, and actually they all went into the bunker to dodge the arrow. That was a really good bunker. Yeah. And they will actually turn it. Come back after a comeback here. Wait for it though, there's gonna be another comeback after this comeback after the initial comeback. You're having a rapid I'll come back to you when it You're happens. having a rapid moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, 16 to 16, this is a keep threatened top. Of course, also gonna be something they have to deal with. And Gluck does have solid hard engage with the Nubrock and the Cocoon. Obviously the respawn has been here for Dudu for some time. He's to use his mirror ball, which is the big power spike for 16 for them to just shove everything back. They save the keep. Mycin split pushing. They have arrow, but look at MSG. He's just making sure Mycin gets out okay. And obviously, um, long, 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 long way away was uh, the Hanzo here, so due to not able to get in there and make that arrow happen. Glug just turned in with everyone. They have exactly 60. Yes. So very similar situations here. All right, so this is the comeback to the comeback that happened after the initial comeback right now. Well, he's going to repeat history again. Junkrat again at the bottom doing camp alone, Mycin. They don't know that, but they should start to get an idea. But because of that, Gal actually uses Hyperion early on. That's not too significant. It's, good. it's a great tool to actually allow Junkrat to get that, then rejoin the fight. I actually like that. I don't think it's a big loss. They use the Hyperion, but Mycin's out of position now. Looks like Feliz will get the turn and no one can interrupt Aimer. Q at the last second. MSG sneaking around the left side. Look at all the damage coming through from Hanaten. Dragon Queen is committed. The bunker is not going to last very long. Lornado here also defensively. Zojay holds onto that armor. Eats those heals as the heroic is popped for Alex Strassa. There's a rip tire. They're looking for the target. It's due to but Hanaten just takes enough damage. Load again, but saved by OJ. Saved by OJ indeed, but it's a red web we were pushed that's going directly towards keeps. This should be at least mid keep going down, and it could be more. Depends on how much split pushing Mycin gets done. He's already starting to prep top. Yeah, because the top wave has, is the biggest for them, they can actually push a little more. And that's why Feliz is going to make the same move and even faster because it's on their side. So the bot push is the one that will sneak up on you if you take too long to clear these. So you can see there was some consideration for not to go down there already, just to give a second wave, but not necessary. Here's the big commitment mid. Bison still pushing top, but you know what? They haven't really been able to do too much with this chest yet. I mean, the keep is definitely gonna go down, but they're not doing it really time efficiently. Great time bias here for Feliz. The arrow is ready for Aimer. Waiting for that opportunity, going further back to get the bigger stun and avoiding that Hyperion. They do not hard engage on it. They're going to let this go down. Aimer actually mounts. He does not commit to the arrow. But I think this might just simply be only one keep going down. Anathan was looking for an angle for an Entomb with Raynor and Deckard possibly. Gets no one. He just walks, Wraith walks in and out and makes no engagement when he actually had some chances in there, I believe. There's the arrow. Oh, big arrow here. Asgard's going to have to bunker. They will try to get into it. Taunt after taunt here coming in. Bunker saves them a lot of time. There's the Look at the Anubrock engage here. Dudu is forced back. 
Riptire looking for the finishing blow here, nice but it is scatter. denied. It gets, it gets blown up. Rosser is in trouble now. Wait, look at that Entomb tossing, having everyone inside. OD survives in all of that. Okay, look at all this damage coming out though from Alex Rossa. Nowhere to run here. Mycin insanely low. KCB would be a miracle if he gets out of this one alive. Overlord is going to be the next to fall. But KCB is just repeatedly slowed. Aimer's on the chase. Massive Stay scatter damage. While, and Mycin gets out safe, but everyone else dies, and Feliz turns this game around again. It's the comeback to the comeback to the comeback to the original comeback in this game. g it's been very back and forth. Mm -hmm. But massively, look at, looking at the scoreboard here, you can see the kills and the team fights have been much better for Feliz. Well, it's a tough one where Gulak, they thought they had enough, but retire, retire is actually not that fast, and plus the scatter is really hard to... That was a really nice scatter to actually get all the damage onto the Riptire only because it was a big threat. Good turnaround by Leoric and Tomb. So Finally he has a chance. Even though they have boss, they have to do this catapult. Webweaver's like, oh god. Or we're starting from the baseline here. Uh-huh. Fort and wall were up, so there's so much of a buffer here for Gluck. 20, the silencing in Tomb is gonna be super impactful here. Not to mention the bullseye could be a huge factor. Yeah, with their siege damage, they're looking for core. See, he hits. Even though they're just getting the wall here. He hits Asgard. He's going to try to probably prevent the bunker if he can, or at least zone him out with that bullseye. It's a very short cooldown. Long range stun. 20 just around the corner for Gluck. No one's split soaking those, so there's no minions to get it now. They're not going to have it for this push. Here's the fight. Toss it onto Roxer. He gets out, dodges the boss stun. That's another few seconds that he can't get there. So into him, Bunker already used. So they keep going down for sure, but not really doing damage to the boss. So core marching is here for Feliz. Okay, Feliz is going to look to end this game right now. Gluck still doesn't have any minions to kill for 20. Finally, this wave is getting blown arrow. up. There's the arrow. Hanaten setting up for a big silence here. Actually already used it, so does not have that available. Heal's coming through from Liu. In that area, the boss is doing most of the work. The core is starting to go down, but they're going to need kills if they uh -huh. want to finish it here. Look, they do have 20, so they can actually defend this one. There's a rip tire. Rip -tire. Possibly one of one, two, chain that up, but the Burak is blown up. And that the boss is gone. Be, that should be it, man. There's the final groundbreaker to catch them all. Repulsion, massive damage here, and knockback is due to sends them flying. Mycin doing his best dodgeball pressure here, but he is going to eventually go down to that final shot there with the mirror ball. Please, we'll take game one in a 20 minute back and forth game. They dominated in kills, but the turn-ins, the control of the objective, and the split pushing from Mycin gave them a lot of trouble. Mycin who actually did a great job at the beginning, harassing Hanzo, actually leading them in the macro because of Mycin's Super play, which we were really not getting too much shots off because we had the four-man rotation contest at the bottom all, all early game. After that wall was destroyed, after they pushed into the fort, even though Junkrat, you think you can escape with your mine all the time, or even better, post-13, but well, he got caught human too many times. He did do nearly 200,000 siege damage, but was killed four times in the act. Zamer ends up with a perfect game here, 3, 11, and 0. Tops all the charts for his squad. Ended up having some missed arrows here and there, but overall was just able to do enough consistent damage. Dudu there at the end with Repulsion, ending the game. Pretty standard comp on the side of Gluck. As, did I kill our sound? Did I do it? I think you killed yours because I do hear you fine.